Part 4. The Countess. Nicole struggled on the floor, trying to figure out how she could get out of this prison of lighting that had encased her body. Maria La Luna circled her old foe. She then pulled out a chair and sat down. Baby girl, it's been too long. You've aged ungracefully. I see you still have a big mouth. Don't worry, baby. Where you are going, you won't need that mouth. Nicole tried to grin through her pain. I guess you are wondering where I've been, aren't you? Not really. I think you'll find this interesting. I was in Reevesbury for a while. I wanted to get away from the lights in Iconic City. Anyway, I spent some time with some old friends, having a grand old time, until one day, I was approached by some chica in a hoodie. She seemed very fond of you. She knew about our history and wanted me to bring you to her. At first I told her to go to hell but she gave me a million reasons to keep listening and that's why I'm here today. I knew you couldn't resist playing hero, I guess. I was right. Laluna then stood up and laughed to herself. But, to be honest I underestimated you. You let all those people die before getting off your ass. And they call me the Countess of Cruelty. This comment angered Nicole who closed her eyes and concentrated her energy hard in one direction. In one burst, she freed herself from the orb's effects and she set her sights on La Luna who smiled and pointed the orb at her. She knew that as she tried to engage La Luna, she might get trapped again so she made the strategic decision to escape. Nicole got into bed as soon as she got home and her whole body was aching. She hadn't been caught off guard like that ever in her life. It had her doubting everything she was trying to accomplish. All she wanted was to fall asleep. After a few minutes, she drifted off into a deep sleep. Nicole found herself sitting on a rock, looking over an empty field. She was pretty sure that she hadn't been here before, but somehow it felt very familiar and significant to her. Suddenly, she heard footsteps behind her. She quickly looked back, anticipating the woman in the shadows, but it wasn't her this time. It was a group of ladies dressed in traditional Filipino clothing. They looked down as they walked toward Nicole. Where am I? They ignored her and formed a circle and bowed to her. Nicole was perplexed and did not like the idea of these women worshipping her. They began to chant in Tagalog. They were asking her to bless them. Stand up! Stand up! Stop worshipping me! They were entranced by her. She tried to walk away from the rock, but could not move. She then looked to her right and saw herself with glowing eyes and a crown made of what looked like stars. This version of herself started to levitate above her and the women and stretch her arms out. That is when she awoke in a sweat. Her bed was hot and so was her body. She stood up and started playing music to calm herself down. She jumped on her bed and stared at the ceiling and couldn't sleep all night. All she could think about was her dream and La Luna. She was determined to take down the crime boss. But it was becoming very apparent to her that something big was at play and she needed answers to her dreams. The following day, Nicole got out of bed early and got ready for school. She left the house without preparing breakfast or seeing her grandmother. Nicole got to school early and went straight to the library and looked for a book on Tagalog culture and the matters of mysticism. She decided to head to class after she failed to find anything substantial. Before she could leave, she was stopped by the librarian. The librarian reached into her purse and pulled out a business card. It was a card for a lecturer at Iconic City University. Dr. Alice Mendoza, PhD. The librarian then smiled at Nicole. Nicole smiled back and left the library. After school, Nicole planned to go visit the doctor, but her plans were derailed when she received a message from Chenowaske. There's another body, Haddon, a high school teacher. I need you to come in. She wanted to lure Nicole into another confrontation. Nicole knew that she could not play this game with La Luna. The dreams in her past had started to command most of her attention and La Luna had become something of an annoyance. If she was more honest with herself, she was scared. She was scared of what would happen if she could not take down La Luna. So, she decided to head straight to the university to talk to the professor. She sped right past all the security guards at the university and searched all the offices and lecture halls for Mendoza. She finally tracked down the doctor. She was giving a lecture. Nicole headed to the lecture hall and slipped in undetected. 
She then sat in the back row as she caught the last few minutes of the doctor's lecture. Dr. Mendoza was a shorty and slightly chubby Filipino woman with glasses on. She was dressed in a brown cardigan with various patterns. She also had a large smile on her face when she spoke. The doctor had been giving a lecture on Filipino history. Nicole was fascinated by everything said in a lecture. Not only was the content interesting, but also it had scratch and she had to find out more about her history and culture. After the lecture, she headed down to the front to talk to the doctor. Hi, Dr. Mendoza. Do you have a minute? I'm sorry I have an urgent matter I need to attend to, but you can email me and I'll get back to you tonight. Doctor, you don't understand. I'm not a student. Um, my name is Nicole. Nicole Haddon. Mendoza stopped in her tracks and stared at Nicole. As in Thomas Haddon's daughter? Yes. Nicole. Wow, it's been a while. When I last saw you, you were tiny and hiding behind your father's legs. Um, yes. I was so sorry to hear of your father's death. Thank. Thank you. So, how can I help you? Well, doctor, I've been having these dreams. Dreams that have to do with my heritage. I don't understand them, and they are starting to scare me. I need your help in understanding what exactly they are trying to say. Um, why don't you follow me to my office? The two then headed to Dr. Mendoza's office. Water? Yes, please. Nicole gulped the water all in one big sip. Mendoza stared at her with confusion. Oh, sorry. Don't worry about it. Take a seat. Nicole then sat up straight in the chair as she began to explain her dreams to the doctor. Mendoza listened carefully and took in every word. She also took some notes. When Nicole was done, Dr. Mendoza looked at her for a second. What do you know about Filipino deities? Nothing. I just know Bethala, the main god, right? Yes, the main god. I'm actually I'm more interested in his daughters, Tala and Meare. Tala was known as the goddess of the stars and Meare was the goddess of the moon. Tawa was kind and generous and would use the stars and orbs to lead men through the night and Mary was the more superior sister who commanded armies and was in charge of ruling the night and represented the right to equality, hunting, beauty, and strength. She was also known as Hulang, which means the moon shadow. But the most important detail in this case is that Mary only has one eye. This detail shocked Nicole. All this information had started to connect to her dreams. She was not sure what she should think of it all. The weird thing is I've never heard of any of this. Why am I dreaming of it? The doctor looked slightly concerned but did not want to stress Nicole even more than she was. You probably heard these stories as a child, before Thomas adopted you. Um, you're probably right. She stood up. Well, I better be going. My Lola gets worried if I don't come home early. Okay, thank you for coming. It was good to see you. Nicole began to walk off when the doctor stopped her. Um, Nicole, I actually have something for you. She pulled out a leather-bound journal that looked like it had been used and old. It was your father's. He left it with me for safekeeping. I never knew what to do with it, but I guess you are the best person to hold on to it. Nicole's face glowed up in excitement. Thank you. She walked out. Later that night, Nicole sat in her bedroom staring at the journal. She wondered what she would find in it. Her dad had left a lot of questions behind when he passed away. Nicole needed to find out if there was anything in the journal she needed to know. Nicole opened the first page and started to read what was written. She quickly realized this had been a journal of all of Thomas' travels and the things he had learned. Most importantly, information on different artifacts he had found. Nicole spent a big chunk of the night reading about her father's adventures. It all brought joy to her mind and heart, but one page caught her attention. A section on the orb of Baal. The orb that emitted lightning. The orb that La Luna had been using to bring destruction to her enemies. From what Nicole read, the orb was used by Baal, the thunder god of Egypt, to guard the tomb of the pharaoh who he had bestowed with the staff of unbridled power. At the end of the notes... Thomas had stated that the only way the orb could be destroyed was by a massive amount of energy that could only be emitted by the staff of Bell. Finally, Nicole had a way of taking down the Countess's ace card. Or did she? Nicole went down into the basement and located the wooden trunk she had slept on a few nights before it and unlocked it. There lying in white padding was the staff of Bell. 
it had accumulated dust as it had been locked away for years. Nicole hadn't seen the stuff since her father had died. The memories started to flood back and she was filled with emotion. It was too much for her to bear so she closed the trunk and covered it with the cloth once more. She slowly walked back as the tears streamed down her face. She couldn't bring herself to use the staff for a multitude of reasons. But mostly she was scared that if she touched it, it would choose her to wield it and she wasn't ready for that. Besides, she had another way of replicating the energy emitted by the staff. That night Nicole dressed up and made her way back to La Luna's old residence. This time she did a more thorough search and she found nothing. She needed to draw in La Luna, so she closed her eyes and her body began to glow intensely and the whole house was filled with intense light. La Luna would definitely see it. Nichols sat on a nearby chair and waited patiently for La Luna to show up. She would have to wait for two hours for La Luna to arrive with her enforcers who were shining their headlights into the house. La Luna got out of a hummer. Why don't you come out, chica? Make it a bit easier on yourself. Nicole's eyes glowed as she made her way out of the house. She disarmed all five of La Luna's enforcers and knocked them out cold. She then set her sights on La Luna who was holding the orb behind her back. Nicole ran circles around La Luna at hyperspeed. Her body started to heat up as the light energy flowed through her body. When she was sure she had built up enough energy to destroy the orb, she let out all of her built-up energy toward the orb and sent La Luna flying. When she finally slowed down, Nicole fell to the ground. She had worked her body too much and was feeling the effects of it. She slowly crawled towards La Luna who laid on the ground slightly burnt. When she got close enough, she grinned at La Luna who struggled to talk. Before La Luna passed out, she said something that shocked Nicole. The lady in the shadows sends her regards. 